Hey guys, Neri here from Drake Wing Gaming. Subscribe me on Twitter, The Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming at you with a new Let's Play episode of Tennis Ace, but this time we are going to go for Kaycon's Path. Um, if I don't sound particularly enthused, it's because I have already recorded a Kaycon video and found out that my mic had recorded no audio, so I had gone about 20 minutes in without getting any audio whatsoever. So, basically I'm just having to rerun through this, so I'm going to try and be as enthusiastic as I can for you guys, but it's like 12.04... In the morning, and honestly, I want to get this video done so I can kind of, you know, decompress and kick back. But yeah, I mean, I still, I still love making these videos for you guys. So what I'm gonna do is, uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna uh, have alternating days. We'll do Shuichi's path one day, K uh, Kekun's path the next. So that way, you guys will be getting Tennis Ace content pretty much every day. So anyway, guys, let's go ahead and jump right back into it. Please sit back and enjoy. Thanks. 18 minutes will entertain you. Let's jump right in. Alarm chain, you're up, and let's go. All right, what should I do? This I'm picking up in the path with a path split for the first time. Let's tag along with Kekun. Well, he's already here anyway, plus it wouldn't hurt to get to know him better. Kasich and I have been friends for a whole year, and I didn't even know about his family. I'm honestly afraid of how oblivious I've been. Before he can get too far away, I run after him to catch up, giving him a tap on the shoulder. What? Do you need something? I was wondering if you wanted to hang out with me today, you know, since training's been cancelled and all. Me? You want to hang out with me? Why? You're free, you're right in front of me, why not? Why don't you go after Arata or Kobayashi? They'd be more than happy to spend time with you. Shuichi is busy with SC issues, and June is practicing for his piano competition. Kaken sighs, scratching his head in exasperation. So I'm your backup plan, huh? No, it's not like that. Come on, you've already, you're already here and we're already together anyway. Give me one reason we shouldn't hang out. Well? Shut up, I'm trying to think. You're seriously looking for a reason to say no? Look, it's not that I don't want to spend time with you, it's just I already had plans. Oh, you have a date or something? He looks exasperated, quickly waving his hands around in a panic. Not those kinds of plants, I... Fine, just don't tell anyone, okay? I nod. You know how I said I was going to practice something that isn't tennis? I... I'm going to practice guitar. Kaken gives me a blank look as if expecting some kind of response. Okay, and why should that be a secret? You don't know my family. You have no idea what kind of lecture I had to hear when I first started learning it. You're the son of a prestigious family that what will the others think when they found out you've been fiddling with such a barbaric instrument? Kicken makes a shrill mock-up voice that is honestly very annoying to hear. I seriously hope whoever he's imitating doesn't sound like that in real life. Why would it be embarrassing? I'm sure if people knew about it, some people might actually approach you to chat. Like I said, you don't know my family. My grandmother in particular is a real piece of work. I don't get to do anything I want to do because, er because everything and everyone is beneath me. Plus, you've got to admit... I'm not the kind of guy you'd imagine playing guitar, right? He strikes a guitar-holding pose and starts doing an air guitar as if to prove a point. Maybe, but up until yesterday, I didn't think of you as a singer, either. I, I'm not a singer. I have to admit, the idea of watching Kaken playing guitar is at least a little bit interesting. I really want to see that, because, like he said, I just can't picture it in my head. Can I come watch? If you don't mind, of course. What? I... Fine. Does that mean I get to visit your house? Well, that's where I'm going to practice, after all. My car is already waiting for me outside, so we should hurry. You're having a chauffeur pick you up? Yeah, my house is kind of far away, so we really can't walk there. Oh, that's right. I sometimes forget you're filthy rich. My family is rich, not me. And yet, I'm pretty sure guitar is probably worth more than my house. Shut up. How much is your house worth? I said that as a joke. If you tell me your guitar actually is worth more than my house, then I'll have to go shoot myself. Don't be so overdramatic. Despite saying that, the tip of his ear begins tinting red and drooping. I guess I could get used to this. Being inside a limousine is definitely going to get chalked up as one of the most surreal experiences of my life. I've had the pleasure of being in a couple of limousines in my time. The back of our car was big enough to fit, fit eight or more people inside. It had two built-in refrigerators, a music system, and air conditioning of its own. Oh, and leather seats! I was fiddling with everything in sight, acting like a kid in a sweet shop. Kagan was leaning back on his seat with his eyes closed. His ears would twitch whenever I made an unexpected sound, but he still remained silent for the entire trip. Eventually, after about, after about a 40-minute drive, we finally arrived at his house. My jaw fell to the floor once we got past the gates. Saying the place was massive was an understatement. Is, is, that, what, is that a private lake? Yes, my father likes to raise, cro raise carp in it. Try not to get too intimidated, though. My grandmother can smell fear.
You're not exactly painting her in a positive light, you know. I couldn't if I tried. Let's just hope she decided to visit one of her awful friends today. Ooh. Yep. Pretty fox. Butler fox. Upon getting out of the limo, a fox butler came to our car and opened the door for Kaken, bowing to him. He had a few gray furs here and there, but other than that, his appearance was completely pristine. I guess even butlers are well-kept. Greetings, young master. I was informed you'd be bringing a guest. It's a pleasure to make your acquaintance, sir. Oh, uh, likewise. You didn't have to come to, you didn't have to come to receive us just because I have a guest, Kuroda. I've also also I've already told you to stop calling me that. And I've already told you that won't be possible, young master. Kaken groans upon being called that a second time, and I can swear I almost see a hint of a smile on the butler's face. If you don't mind, the master would like to have a word with you. And my grandmother she is visiting a friend in the neighboring town and should be back tomorrow morning. Thankfully, at least I won't have to deal with that. By the way, the master asked that your friend wait for you wait in your room while you two talk. The butler's eyes, that up to this moment have been soft and kind, suddenly become very sharp, almost unfriendly. It doesn't seem like there's any malice behind it, but I suddenly feel as if I'm being studied. Um, Kaken? Don't worry about it. Crota, please take Senpai over to my room. I'll be there in a second. Very well. Kaken looks at me before leaving, giving me a small nod and going inside the house. I try to follow, but his butler quickly walks in front of me, blocking my path with a kind smile on his face. No, sir. That entrance would force us into the service area in the communal room. The side entrance is for the bedrooms. Oh, uh, okay. Man, what a convoluted floor plan. I am taken across the gardens to the side entrance of the mansion. I can see a pool and a sports court on the side of the building. I also have a closer look at the woods surrounding the mansion. We're not even out of the town yet. How the hell is there so much green in here? Wow, no wonder Kaken is so disconnected from regular stuff. This place is almost like a mini-city on its own. The butler chuckles. The wrinkles around his eyes and mouth make me think that this man probably smiles a lot. <laughs> Master Kasuk said the same thing when he first moved here. That boy had such a hard time adapting to life in this place. Suddenly his face switches to a frown. He looks down at his feet, grabbing his elbow with his left arm. Of course his grandmother's strictness didn't do much to help. We go inside the building, walking through a long hallway with a multitude of rooms. I want to see if I can prod him for more information. He used to live in another mansion? One smaller than this one? The fox shot a puzzled glance at me. He hasn't told you. Told me what? He hesitates for a few seconds. We come to a stop in front of the last room in the hall, and he slides open the door for me. If he's yet to tell you, then it is not my place. Please, wait here for the young master's return. There's a video game underneath the TV. Feel free to use it. I turn around to get a look at Kaken's room and... What the hell is with this room? This, this is the fanciest room I've ever seen. Even the hotel rooms I've seen don't come close to measuring up. Is this what an elite lives like? What? Well, this room... This is... Oh, I'm sorry. Please don't let Young Master's room give you the wrong idea. The other rooms in the house aren't like this. Th they aren't? No. This used to be a servant's room. His grandmother was against it, but he insisted on having this one because he wanted the smallest, least fancy room in the house. The rooms for the family are much, much bigger. That's not what I was worried about. Wait, it can get fancier than this? You've got to be kidding me! Well, I shall be going now. If you wish to call a servant, there's a button next to the TV that'll ring a bell in the servant's lounge. Thank you for your patience. Before I manage to get a word in, he has already closed the door and left. So this is the kind of life Kaken lives, huh? Somehow this sort of lavish lifestyle just doesn't suit the image of, a he of him in my head. Still, what am I supposed to do until he gets here? Hmm, his butler said he has a video game console under the TV. Let me check that. Oh guys, I am so very tired right now. Oh my god, this TV is huge! How does this thing even get through the- You know what? I don't even want to know. Probably craned it through the window. Still, there are so many gaming consoles here. Not only does he have all the latest generation comp models, he also has the vintage consoles from up to 20 years ago. This entertainment unit with all its stuff is probably worth more than everything I have in my bedroom. Oof, I need to sit down. I spend quite a bit of time merely snooping around the bedroom, trying to find, trying to find all the hidden secrets in here. In there. In here. <laughs> As the door slides open, I plop upright in surprise, thinking one of his staff might have caught me looking around. Instead, I just see Kaken looking down at me. If you're looking for hidden pornography, I'm sorry to inform you that I don't have any. I, I wasn't! But now I do want to look for it. So, do you think of me as an alien yet? Not yet. Getting there, though. He shakes his head sideways, scoffing. Like I said, I'm just going to practice with the guitar. You'll probably get bored of watching it soon. 
When you do, feel free to play something on the TV. It won't bother me. There's no need. I'll just watch you play. So that face that says you don't believe me. Kasuk shrugs, walking towards his closet and opening it to pull out a guitar case made entirely out of leather. It definitely looks very fancy. Wait, what have you told me? What have you told me to call him Case K? So, because you didn't, you don't like me pronouncing it Kasuk, so I'll say Case K. So from now on, I guess he'll be Case K. He carefully unzips it and removes the grips of the arm of the guitar. Ooh, that is nice. Good lord. Wow. The guitar is so shiny and beautiful. My mind can't even begin to process how expensive this must have been. A how expensive was this? Trust me, you don't want to know. Even I was taken aback by it. But I couldn't say no. My father likes throwing his weight around and spending ridiculous amounts of money. Well, uh... Try me. Kaken looks away, trying to decide whether he'll say something or not. Three million dollars. What?! That's exactly how I reacted when he told me the price. Oh, don't worry, this was a bargain. It only cost three million dollars. I was furious, but I couldn't quite say no. My grandmother was pissed, too, but her reasons were quite different. What? I... Uh, how? Wow. I know you said you were rich, but it, it didn't actually seem real until now. Yeah, I understand. Honestly, it's pretty hard to wrap your head around it. I didn't realize how far removed I was from the general society until you clued me into it. Tell me about it. By the way, your butler said something about you also having a hard time adapting when you first moved here. When I asked him about it, he said it wasn't up to him to say. Oh, he did, did he? didn't he? It's just... Kaken sighs, scratching his forehead. He puts his guitar back in his case and sits down on a chair. I... I wasn't actually born here. Eighteen years ago, my father seduced one of his servants. I'm the product of that relationship. Wait, so you're... A bastard, yeah. Once it was found out that my mom was pregnant, she was fired and sent away. I didn't even know I had a father until I was six or so, when his lackey showed up at our door. They... I... no. I'm sorry. I don't want to talk about this anymore. I tried to think of any words I could say. Something to distract him or maybe make him feel better. That's a nice image. That's a good thumbnail right there. Without another word, Kaken grabs his guitar again. He plugs it into an amp next to his bed, stroking the guitar's body with visible affection, and his fingers touch the strings. And again, my jaw hits the floor. Once again, my jaw hits the floor. When he said that he was practicing guitar, I fully expected him to be a complete novice who could barely make some semblance of a sound come out of the strings. This? This is incredible. His fingers stroke the strings ex expertly, his other hand making the chords so fast that I honestly can't believe it. He doesn't just play guitar, he absolutely kills it. And as I start getting into the groove, and getting into the groove to the sound of his guitar, he abruptly stops. He tosses the guitar on top of his bed and groans. Damn it, I can't get into it. Is something wrong? Yeah, I can't concentrate with you watching me. Uh oh. I'm sorry, if you want me to go, don't be stupid. There's no need for that, and it's not your fault. Plus, I'm just being a crappy host. Inviting you to my place and just ignoring you to play with my guitar. I told you I don't mind. You can practice if you want. Maybe, but I'm not really in the mood right now. Do you want to do something? Uh... Hmm, we have a pool, if you're interested. Or we could also stay in my room and play video games. I don't have a swimsuit, so I'll pass on the pool. I wouldn't mind playing some games, though. Is there a specific console you want to play? If not, I'll just use the one that's plugged in right now. Nah, you can use that one. I never touched the new generation console anyway. All right. After losing every single race I played against Kaken, I'm almost ready to give up on it. Seriously, I haven't managed to beat him a single time, and I'm good at racing games. Heh, <laughs> I guess today just wasn't your day. I have an uncomfortable urge to slap that grin off his face. Someone knocks on the door, and before either of us has time to answer it, they slide it open. Oh look, it's Danny DeVito as a hare. I'm the trash man! <laughs> Another white hare, an older one, stands in front of the door, smiling. Kaisuk, I'm coming in. What do you want, father? Whoa, it's like the air around Kaken just completely changed all of a sudden. Why are you looking so serious? There's so much hidden hostility in his eyes, it's making me uncomfortable. The older man, on the other hand, was smiling from ear to ear. Well, it's just that you haven't done as I asked. I was coming here to check if there was any reason for that. I don't want to. Is that reason enough for you? Why should I introduce you to my friends? Um, what? Kasuk's father walks up to me, grabbing my hand and shaking it enthusiastically. I'm still too stupefied by what's happening to actually reciprocate. 
I remember how I was called away when we arrived. Father wanted to chastise me for not informing him that I was bringing a guest. Of course, he wasn't the least bit interested in meeting you until I told him who you were. He's probably trying to win you over so you'll pick our company as a sponsor when you go pro. The elder hair backs away, flinching. Now, Kesa, that is a little unfair. I'm just interested in meeting your friends. As if I'd believe that. You have never been interested in me or the activities that I partake in. Why should I believe you when you say you want to meet my friends? It's obvious that you're looking to gain something from this. Now, are we done here? Kasich's father shifts around uncomfortably. His face scrunches up into a sad expression for a second. Kasich shows him no quarter, staring the man down without an ounce of compassion. I'm... I'm not just imagining things, right? This is actually a heavy mood, right? The older man clears his throat, scratching the back of his neck and looking over at me again, flashing me a wry smile. I guess I better leave you two for now. It was a pleasure to make your acquaintance. I do hope you'll visit us more often. It's been so long since Kasich's had friends over. Yes, and you know exactly why. His father sheepishly walks away, leaving the room. We are left alone once again. Kasich sighs, rubbing his forehead with his hands. Talking to him is such a headache. Kaken, I don't mean to pry, but you were a bit harsh on your father. Like I said, you don't know my family. Up until a couple years ago, he never showed an inkling of interest in me. Whenever we talk, he was dry and to the point. I spent years trying to gain his affection, but... He groans again. I don't want to talk about this right now. I so don't want to talk about this right now. Look, I'm sorry, Shuichi Shuichi-san, but I'm really not in the mood to have this kind of conversation. Can we just pretend this never happened? Man, I have no idea what's going on, but I'm not just imagining it. Kaken's good mood is totally gone. Look, I know it probably doesn't mean much to you, but if you ever need someone to vent to, I'm here for you. Huh? I... what? Where did that come from? Oh, come on. I know you don't always feel like you belong with us. You've, all, you've told me that already. I can't pretend to understand how hard it is for you over here. As far as you're concerned, I'm just some stranger looking at things from an outside perspective, but my opinion probably doesn't really matter to you. But I can't help but feel that sometimes you act, I don't know, distant? Is that the word I'm looking for? You're so similar to Shuichi in that regard. Even though you have friends around you that would support you no matter what, you just prefer to shoulder everything on your own. I mean, come on, how long have we known each other for? Yet I never knew anything about all the issues you have at home. I mean, if not me, have you at least told Saya? Hmm. That much is answer enough for me. See, we've been here for you all this time, and yet you never bothered to look our way for support. I can understand if you don't want to ask, if you don't know how to ask, but we're your friends. I know you've you've had issues with this kind of thing in the past, but we're not just along for the ride. I honestly don't give a crap about your family's status or yours for that matter, whether you're highborn or lowborn, a bastard or a legitimate child. I couldn't give two shits about that. All that matters is all that matters to me is that you're Keiko and that I've come to know over the last, the last year. I might not know you as well as you as you as Shuichi or Saya, but you can absolutely be sure that you're one of my precious friends. And I know that these two feel the same way as I do, even if they have their own peculiar ways to show it. So, really, even if you don't feel like you can open up to me, at least try to get some support from Saya. I know you like her the best out of all of us anyway. Oh man, I really spoke a lot. I wasn't even sure I was going with that, and yet the words kept pouring out. I... I don't know what to say to that, other than, wow, that is. Alright guys, I'm gonna go ahead and pause it right here. I am tired. I don't have thoughts right now. Okay, alright guys, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and that notification bell. Leave a super thanks or tip if you can, it always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'm gonna go get some sleep. Bye-bye!